uh, some type of a demigod almost. My name is Gunnar Hansen. In 1973, I killed four people. I was Leatherface in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. When Texas Chainsaw Massacre was released, it played predominantly in drive-ins. And to say there was a, an uproar over it would be an understatement. You know, teenagers went in their cars looking for a good time. And what they were uh, exposed to was literally 90 minutes of pure hell. Directed by Toby Hooper, the film featured a character named Leatherface, who wore a mask made of human skin. During the filming, late one night, Toby told me that this was based on Ed Gein, uh, very loosely. I mean, what he said was that Ed Gein was the inspiration for the family, that if you take, essentially, the fact that they made furniture out of bones, that they had skin lamps, uh, that they might be cannibals, and that Leatherface wore a mask, those characteristics were lifted from Ed Gein. What Leatherface really is, is Ed Gein as a little child would imagine him to be. Because these crimes were real, we had to make Leatherface into this hulking monster who wears a mask of human flesh and wields a chainsaw. Instead of being the boy next door who, who does these horrible things. 17 years later, a different take on the legend of Ed Gein would help make the film The Silence of the Lambs a critical and commercial hit. If you look at The Silence of the Lambs, where the Buffalo Bill character is trying to make a, a skin suit out of women's body parts, which is something that's based directly on Gein. The killer, the grave robber, all of the things that, you know, you want to get into a good horror story, he was there. He was their source because the imagination could take Ed Gein anywhere, and, uh, and, it, and it has. The irony is that as twisted as Norman Bates was, as terrifying as Leatherface wielding his chainsaw is, and as pathologically insane as Buffalo Bill is, Gein was worse. Gein had everything these characters had in spades. 2001 saw the release of a low-budget independent film about the life of Ed Gein. I thought Ed Gein would be a good topic for a movie just because of the mindset of this person, uh, this, this person who lives by himself with his fantasies and with just his loneliness and his mental illness, eventually steps over the line and becomes a killer. <laughs> On July 26, 1984, Ed Gein died of respiratory failure. He was 77 years old. There wasn't too much emotion at that time. There wasn't much talk going on in town other than he's gone. He's dead. Ed Gein ended up being buried in the most uh, appropriate place for him, right next to his mother in the Plainfield Cemetery. You know, ever since her own death in 1945, uh, it had been his, his great dream to, to get back to her. And uh, finally, in death, he, he had achieved that. Sometime after his death, Ed Gein's tombstone was stolen from the ground. It was eventually recovered and is currently being kept in storage at the Washara County Sheriff's Department. To this day, however, groundskeepers at Plainfield Cemetery still find flowers and letters that have been left at his grave. There's no way in the world that anyone could ever decipher completely or even uh, intelligently what Ed was thinking or doing. It's not the nature of man to do the things that he did. It's, uh, it's, it's an aberration. The fact that Ed Gein was a sick man mentally, I don't think that mattered to any of us. He did some horrible things, no matter what his condition was, and so we had no sympathy for the man. Mr. Gein was an example of a monster that was in hiding. He was not known to his neighbors. He presented a facade of normality to them. And that's why he literally could have the mask of sanity over the whole situation until he was discovered. Obviously, we can never really know. To ask what made Ed Gein Ed Gein is ultimately as unknowable as to ask what made Mozart Mozart. 
You just don't know. On the next Cold Case Files, they knew it was no accident. I've been to a lot of hunting accidents, none of which look like this. They finally had their man. This is it. This is where Jimmy's going to confess to me. Then it all went wrong. On Cold Case Files, next, only on A&E.